Hello and welcome to Mark Training. My name's Simon. In this session today, we're going to be looking at our Teams Training Part 2. So, uh, without any further ado, let's hop on into Teams. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, in Team Training Part 2, we're going to have a, a quick look through the class notebooks, assignments, and grades. Uh, and we're going to uh, see what it's uh, like from the student's point of view as well. So let's have a quick look into Thought, which is the team that we created. Okay, so if we look into Files, um, and we give it a moment to refresh, I put in a, a Kahoot template in the general area, which is obviously accessible to everybody, and anybody can edit or delete, and one in the in the uh, class materials area which is read only to students but obviously teachers can actually do what they want I want to log on as a student later on we're going to actually have a look at that and I'll, I'll show you the difference there so class notebook class notebook is uh, based on OneNote and it's actually a really useful piece of, of, of technology to have so uh, it says give your students a private space for notes and a canvas for collaboration so we're going to set up our class note our OneNote class notebook <sighs> And I'm actually going to use a blank notebook. I do actually have uh, other notebooks I can copy from, but I'm going to use a blank notebook to walk you through exactly what it is. So we have a collaboration space. So team notes are stored here for everyone to see. Uh, all channels will have sections in there. And teacher can edit the comments and the students can edit as well. So that's uh, a bit of a free for all if you like. There's a content library where we can publish course materials to our students. So obviously we get to edit it. Uh, but our students can only view that content. They can download it and they can obviously copy it and paste it into their own notebook, um, but they can't actually alter it. We have a teacher-only section, which is relatively new. Um, this only came in uh, within the last couple of weeks of this video being recorded. Uh, we get to share that with our teachers. So the teacher's in the team. So it's not just me, it would be me and it would be our teacher. Uh, we both get to see the same sort of thing. So we can actually collaborate on the side. Uh, you know, we'll make sure that we're, we're, we're kept up to date. And then we have a student notebook, which is a private space for each individual student uh, for them to actually do whatever they want. We actually get to, to see and edit the content, and so do the students as well. Okay, so if you're not happy with any of that, you have to push discard, at which point it will take you back and you can't go any further. But obviously we are quite happy with that, so I'm going to push next. These are the uh, sections within each uh, student notebook. So at the moment we've got handouts, class notes, homework and quizzes. Obviously we can delete whatever we want, so let's just delete quizzes. And we can add sections as well. So if for sake of example we, we were doing something with... Um, who, uh, no, let's not go with Norse mythology. I've done Norse mythology before. And it turned out I knew less than I thought I did about Norse mythology. So let's go with English. We'll just put English in there for a moment. And in fact, we can actually do maths as well. There you go. So now each student will actually get handouts, class notes, homework, English and maths. And I'm just going to click on create. Now what happens here is uh, my laptop will go through my broadband up to Microsoft and it actually starts to get my class notebook ready. Now I know that my laptop's not too bad, but my broadband is rather poor. And I know that with the five students that I've got, it takes around about 30 seconds. Which is handy, because actually 30 seconds is roughly the amount of time it takes me to explain the fact that it actually takes 30 seconds. And in a minute, the little notebook there is actually going to disappear. We're actually going to get a round rotating um, Microsoft, um, what you can call it, thing, circle. Couldn't remember the word circle. How weird is that? We'll get a circle, then the class notebook will come up, uh, but it'll be sort of greyed out, and then actually it will spring to life in about 30 seconds. So there we go. Okay, so the first page we see is a welcome to class notebook, and it just gives you a brief overview of exactly what we've just been through. This area at the top uh, is very, very Microsoft looking, and obviously that's done on purpose to make you feel at home straight away. So you've got the usual file, home, insert, and all that kind of stuff, and, and we can uh, change our fonts, etc., etc. If we expand that out, we've got our welcome here. There's an FAQ page, so if you want to have a look at the FAQ page and, uh, you know, file a support ticket. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that. Um, okay, so here we have, on the left-hand side, we have our collaboration space, which is the space that we can actually all use. There is a nice little collaboration space getting started with the collaboration space thing there. There's our content library, which is the bit that we get to put stuff up, um, but our students can only view it, copy it, or download it. 
And it says, uh, ask students to copy pre-made pages from sections like handouts, etc., etc. And then you've got teacher only. This is where the teachers involved in the team can actually use um, the teacher only section. Uh, we can put materials that should be kept private out of the way of the rest of the class. And then we have our five pupils I've put in here. So let's have a click on Arc Pupil 1. And you can see we've got English, handouts, class notes, maths and homework. Interestingly, they don't put it in uh, alphabetical order. I don't know why. And then you've got Arc Pupil 2. And theirs is in a completely different order. It's, it's bizarre. I don't know why Microsoft do that. Uh, it, it is just weird. You can obviously drag and drop things into um, into different orders. So you can actually, if you wanted to spend the time, uh, you can actually put it into uh, whatever order it is that you particularly feel like. So let's have a quick look at the collaboration space. Now there's a nice little thing here saying about the collaboration space and you can just about see at the bottom of my screen here it says add section and there's an add page. You can also add a section by right clicking up here uh, and saying new section or indeed new page. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to click the new section and the section that I'm actually going to add um, is, oh what should we add, what should we add? Let's add um, Let's add somebody who was alive. Let's go with, I'll tell you what, uh, no, because that's going to be way too much. Uh, oh, crikey. William Shakespeare. Is that how you spell Shakespeare? I don't know. The English teachers right now are all shouting at me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a computer guy. So we've added a section called William Shakespeare. I'm not happy with the colour. I don't think uh, it should be red. Uh, so I actually want to use uh, purple. Why not? I want, I want purple. Now, I don't want this section here, this uh, using the collaboration section. Uh, so I can actually right click on that and I can delete that section if I want to. So here we go. Permanently delete. Now, once you've permanently deleted a section, it's gone. OK, it's just gone. Uh, you're not bringing it back. It's gone. So probably try and avoid deleting stuff that you don't want to delete. Uh, that, that would be my, my biggest hint there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to open my browser, William Shakespeare. Now we can see that I have quite plainly spelt William Shakespeare wrong because there is an E at the end of Shakespeare. There is no E on the end of my Shakespeare. But handily I can right click and rename my section to be whatever I want. So there you go, William Shakespeare. If I wanted to change that to Lord Byron, I can change it to Lord Byron. If I wanted to change that to Nikola Tesla, I can change that to Nikola Tesla. But let's just go with William Shakespeare for the time being. You can see that we have a new untitled page here and that will remain untitled until I actually put something over here where that flashing cursor is right now. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into that uh, uh, and I'm gonna say um, early life, here we go. Right now I actually want several different pages in here. So again, I can either, uh, I can right click and I can put new page or I can obviously click down here, new page. Or I can right click on William Shakespeare and put new page. So we've got all these untitled pages coming in. I'm just going to a few more. Uh, why not? So we've got early life. Uh, okay, let's go with um, schooling. Uh, we're going to go with uh, private life. And uh, this one we're going to go with uh, professional life. Uh, we all know that he had a, a wife and uh, he had some children, I would imagine. I don't know. Um, and then we can go with um, play, plats, plays. Uh, let's go with uh, sonnets. And let's go with uh, legacy. Here we go. Legacy is a nice way of saying how you remembered after you die, but there we go. Right, so here we go, we've got all these pages. Um, now, it, it, it's a bit sort of hickledy pickledy in some ways because we've got um, you know things in the wrong place and it, it, it's a bit difficult to navigate through. So early life, okay, schooling, that's brilliant. And then we've got private life, that's great. Um, but the private life, we, we kind of want the wife to be in the private life, I guess, and probably the children. Uh, and then professional life, we've got plays, sonnets, and then we've got legacy. But it's still a little bit hard to read. So what you can actually do is we can right click on one of these pages and make it a sub page. 
which just indents it quite nicely uh, underneath there. So early life, and then under early life, you've got schooling, private life. Uh, we have uh, wife, we're going to make a sub page. Uh, we're going to make uh, children a sub page as well. Then I'm going to leave professional life as a main page. And then obviously, we've got uh, plays, sonnets. And obviously, we can put in there about the, uh, the Globe Theatre and uh, various other professional bits because obviously he did uh, more than plays and sonnets and then legacy i'm just going to leave down there at the bottom so you can see we've kind of made it just a little bit easier to sort of navigate through there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click into early life Whew, right so um in computer programming the first thing that you ever learn to code is hello world but obviously in uh, shakespearean times Ye oldie worldy. There you go. So we can obviously add text and we can change that text uh, to do whatever we want it to be. So instead of Calibri 11, uh, maybe you want it in, uh, well, anything you, you want. I mean, you've got all the Microsoft sort of fonts here. Please don't use Comic Sans. Uh, Comic Sans is awful. It should never have been invented. It's just horrible. Um, yeah, don't use Comic Sans. Uh, let's go with a nice Dubai. Here we go. I'm going to change that to Dubai, and I'm going to change that to 18. Don't use Comic Sans. Uh, we can actually do exactly the same with our title page there. So we can actually uh, do whatever we want. We can actually even make it a heading if we wanted to. Uh, and let's make it a little bit bigger than that. Let's go with that. Now, when we go back over here, it still says exactly the same. Okay, this bit doesn't change. It's only this bit that changes. The oldie worldy. Oh, dear. Okay, so... Um, we've got undo we've got a clipboard uh, so you can obviously do the cut, copy and paste thing we've got uh, fonts, font sizes we can make things bold, italic, underlined we can highlight stuff, we can highlight stuff in yellow and these different colours down here how are you going to highlight it in black, that's quite interesting then we've got uh, some font colours here so obviously we've got the usual sort of uh, black, blues, reds there you go, there's your white for your highlighting in black We've got Format Painter, we've got a Format Eraser. We've actually got some font formatting, which is, as I remember rightly, has Superscript, Subscript, and Strike Through. There we go. Uh, we've got some bullet points, some numbers, and we've got Paragraph Formatting, so you can indent and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's obviously the style, so obviously I've used Heading 1, but obviously there's different bits and pieces down there. We can insert some tags, uh, so we can actually, you know, we can put in a to-do type, type tag list, that sort of thing. Uh, we've got spelling checks, uh, and we can hide spelling errors if we want to. We can actually set the language, and obviously it's set to English UK on my machine, because obviously my machine is set to English UK. And then, of course, we've got dictate. Dictate, we can set whatever language we would like it to dictate in. You put the cursor wherever it is you want. You push the dictate button, and it will actually try and read your stuff to you. I'm not going to do that right now uh, because it, 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 I'm using my microphone and there's going to be feedback and it's just going to be terrible. Okay, so the next tab across is insert and it's, it does pretty much what it says on the tin. We get to insert some stuff so we can insert a table. Uh, in Word, Microsoft Word, you can insert a table and it looks just like that sort of thing. It's exactly the same really. I'm just going to highlight that top row and I'm going to put some shading on there. Uh, so over here, I'm just going to push uh, column one. Uh, column two, column three, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that, uh, I'm going to go back to the home bit, I'm going to make my writing in there white, because obviously white stands out more than black, as you can see, which is why I've left that cold just there. Now if I go back to uh, clicking my table again, uh, you can do exactly the same as you can in Microsoft Word, or Publisher, or PowerPoint. Um, let's just say I've, I've added too many columns here, so what I can do is I can either right click and I can delete it, or of course there's a delete button up there and I'm actually going to delete my column. So there you go, I can delete a column, and when I get to the end of something uh, and hit return, it will actually, it behaves exactly like a table would. So I hit return and it will automatically put in a new, uh, a new row at the bottom for me. So that's our, our table. So we're now going to insert a couple of files. There's two ways uh, that we can insert PDFs and one way that we can insert normal files. We can insert files as an attachment, so I'm just going to choose a file and I'm just going to randomly choose um, not a PDF, I want, uh, there you go, a, a, a Word document. It's actually a reference handbook on how to use referencing, uh, which I believe is, is brilliant. 
Okay, um, you can see we can put that in, and that's great. We can double click on that, and we can get to download it. What we can also do is we can insert a, a PDF. So I'm actually just going to insert a PDF just to show that obviously we can get two different things. Doop -doop -doop -doop. I actually had the Word document highlighted, uh, which is why that's actually written over the Word document. Uh, uh, so just be careful of that. And I'm going to insert this PDF as a file printout. So I'm going to choose exactly the same PDF. And I'm going to show you the difference between just inserting it as an attachment and inserting it with a file printout. So when you insert it as an attachment, all you get to do is download that. When you insert it as a, a a file printout you still get a PDF that you can download but you actually get to view it as well so this is actually just a one-page PDF that I had kicking around um, and you can see it's actually a, a cyber security certificate from Cisco uh, it's mine I have uh, CCNA in cyber security ops uh, which which was actually really really good really useful okay so that, that's the two ways that we can insert files Doing this in a PDF kind of way, that's actually really interesting and really useful because what you can also do, if you want to, is you can actually delete the actual PDF download link for it. That's the one that I put up there earlier. So now we've actually just got our PDF in there. We can also, let me just uh, clip off of that, otherwise I'll overwrite it. We can insert pictures. So I'm going to insert a picture from a file. This could be a file that I've downloaded. If it is a file that I've downloaded off the internet, obviously you need to make sure that um, you're not infringing any copyrights um, or, or try and go for Creative Commons. I think we went over this in part one as well. I'm actually just going to insert, actually I'm going to insert some minions this time around I think. And here we go, here's my uh, little minion picture coming in. Do -ba -do -ba -do. Aren't they cute? I mean, who doesn't love a minion? I mean really? You know, they're minions. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another picture. I'm going to insert a picture from online. Uh, and this is obviously Microsoft's powered search. Uh, I'm actually going to search for uh, Ferrari. Why not? Uh, that, oh, yeah, that one. Definitely, definitely that one. That'll do. And I'm just going to insert the uh, the lovely picture of a Ferrari. <laughs> yes, please. I would love one. Thank you very much. In fact, if any of you out there want to buy me one, I will quite happily receive it. Thank you. Okay, so we've inserted a couple of pictures. Uh, we can also insert links. So let's insert a link. Let's go to a website somewhere and insert a link. Let's, uh, in fact, there we go. Let's just do that William Shakespeare link uh, from Wikipedia. So, uh, Bill Wobble Dagger. Good old Bill Wobble Dagger. Okay, so we've inserted a nice link there. Audio, we can actually insert audio clip. We can actually just push that button and then it actually uh, accesses your microphone. You talk into the microphone and it will put it in our class notebook. Uh, that's great, but obviously not something I can show you because I'm already using my microphone to talk to you folks. So I can't actually do that, but you can obviously do that. You can insert symbols. So it's things like pi, beta, alpha, theta, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, there's the ohm sign, also known as omega, but never mind. Uh, there's copyright signs and all of that kind of stuff. So you can insert those if you wish. Here's some math stuff. Uh, if you're teaching math, have a look in there. Emojis. Everybody loves an emoji. Uh, there's some office add-ins um, that you can click on, and then it takes about a week and a half on my broadband to actually figure something out. We don't have actually any office, but you can actually go to the office store and you can actually get some add-ins if you want to. We can uh, throw in a Microsoft form if you wish. Uh, I'm not going to do that. It takes too long uh, for the brief time that I am, I've got for you. And then we've got the three dots, more options, and we can insert stickers and meeting details. Let's insert a sticker because there's one sticker that I particularly like, and it's this angry fox guy. Uh, it says fox. I think his name's supposed to be Reynard, but I don't know why I know that. Okay, so we've inserted all of this sort of content here. So we've got normal text, we've got a table, uh, we've got um, a, a file, we've got a, a printout of a PDF, a couple of images, uh, one that's obviously uh, one that I've got and one that's um, straight off of the internet. Um, and <laughs> we've got uh, a hyperlink there and we've got uh, a, a nice little friendly looking fox down at the bottom. So the next tab across is actually draw and this is where I apologize 
I am absolutely rubbish at drawing. Uh, in fact, I'm so bad at drawing that when I was at school, uh, my art teacher said, you're not taking art next year, are you, Simon? I said no. She said, good. In that case, just sit over there and keep yourself amused uh, because I'm really, 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 really not artistic. Coupled with the fact that I don't have a touch screen at this point, uh, I don't have a graphics tablet. What I do have is a mouse that my daughter bought me for Father's Day a couple of years ago in the shape of a Range Rover. And the mouse in the shape of a Range Rover is complete with wing mirrors uh, that stick out into the side of your hand. This doesn't make it the most comfortable mouse in the world. And when you're going to draw something, it makes it even worse. So all of that is the run up to, I'm sorry for what, I'm, well, for, well, for what you're about to see. So we have uh, the text tool, which is obviously what I've got at the moment, floating around in text. We've got the marquee selection tool here, so we can actually select different bits and pieces. We've got the eraser and we've got the pens. So let's have a quick look at a pen. Uh, we've got black, we've got blue, we've got green, we've got red, and we've got different colors as well. I'm just gonna select um, a nice cheerful light gray. <laughs> Okay, by default it will select uh, the middle kind of, that's supposed to be a straight line by the way, the middle uh, of, of the thickness sizes, uh, it will go as thin as that, or indeed as thick as that. Okay, so now I'm going to actually use my eraser look, I'm just going to delete those, no problem at all. Okay, uh, we've also got a highlighter, so we've got the usual sort of highlighter colours, plus a few more. Um, so if I actually wanted to uh, do a highlight thing, Ah, come on. Uh, let's make it a nice thick highlighter so you can actually highlight stuff. Uh, but we're going to stick with our pen for a moment. That's way too big. Uh, right, let's go back to pen and let's go for something around there. -ish. Okay, so I can actually draw all over my text. I can draw all over my table. Uh, I can say, yes, this is a PDF. Oh, 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 look at that. That's got to be one of the best arrows I've done. I mean, I did a really good one the other week, but that is, that's, that's pretty good. That's almost up there. So we want this one. Uh, again, uh, PDF. Now, this is where we really, really win over Google Classroom. Google Classroom, you can put a PDF up and you can't do anything with it. Um, in Microsoft Teams, in our class notebook, we get to draw all over PDFs, no problem at all. So if you particularly wanted to highlight the fact that this was actually done in the University of... Oh, well, that's supposed to be a, a, a round kind of thing. Never mind. Um, uh, the, oh, yeah, see? There's my normal arrows. Here we go. Um, we <laughs> oh, dear. By the way, it wasn't the 13th of September. I actually took the exam in, I think, January or February, but never mind. Um, so we can actually do that sort of thing. We can actually... Look at this, and if we're trying to do some abstract sort of thinking, we can look and go, oh, look at the minions, aren't they lovely? So has anybody noticed that they are actually in the shape of a love heart? Because we all love minions. So we can actually draw all over that. This is an image that we got off the internet, and it did actually state when we were actually doing this, um, you know, about copyright and stuff. So we could actually say, um, oh, no, I don't want to draw all over the nice Ferrari. I really, really don't, but I'm going to. We all know I'm going to, so here we go. How can I make this Ferrari better? <laughs> I can't. Uh, so let's just, you know, if, if we wanted to colour in... Oh, yeah, OK, let's colour in the air scoops in the front, Simon. That's a great look, that is, isn't it? So if, if we wanted... <laughs> I did tell you, from the word go, I am rubbish at art. So we can actually draw all over uh, images from wherever we get them from. Here's our hyperlink, so I can uh, draw all over that. And I can still use this hyperlink, I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, but we can still use that, that's no problem, I've just drawn all over it. And then we've got our nice little friendly fox. Now he looks really, really miffed, doesn't he? He does not look a happy fox. Um, and I've worked this out, the reason that he doesn't look like a very happy fox is quite simple. Somebody has given him a giant paintbrush, which in itself is a great thing, thank you very much. I would love a giant paintbrush and a giant pencil sharpener. What he actually needs is either a giant pencil to go with his pencil sharpener, or he needs a palette of paint to go with his paintbrush. He's angry because he's run out of paint and he's going, what am I supposed to do with this? That's my theory. 
I appreciate this looks really weird because I've just set something up and doodled all over it in a very haphazard kind of way. But there is actually a point to this. If you are more artistic than me, and let's face it, I've got a cat who is more artistic than me. Um, if you're more artistic than me, you can actually start pointing out and creating some really interesting feature-rich content on this. You can go absolutely mad with it. There's all sorts that you can do. You can grab in nice images. You can you can put in uh, you know your own drawings. You can highlight stuff. You can put in tables. You can embed links. You can probably put uh, YouTube videos up there. You can do all sorts of stuff here, um, and, and that's what's really really great about this. I mean, it is absolutely magic. So let's have a look. Uh, I've done all of that in William Shakespeare early life. So in William Shakespeare's early life, he got uh, a certificate for cybersecurity operations uh, and he liked minions and owned a Ferrari. Uh, we all know that about William Shakespeare. Obviously, it's in all of his plays. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go to the internet. And I'm going to go to uh, teams.microsoft.com. And I'm going to log on as one of my students. So I don't want you to try and sign me in. Come on. I don't want you to sign me in. I want you to ask me what people... Oh, what people want. Fabulous. Okay, so we'll go with what people want. Whew. I'm pleased that I came up with what people want, actually. Because that leads us very nicely into how we do things. Okay, so this is what our students see. And you can see that we've got uh, some recent activity. So I actually added them to four. Brilliant. Uh, here's our calendar, which has got nothing in there. And here's the teams. So the, this is the team that uh, people one is involved with. And at the moment, they are only involved with four because that's the team that we created for them. And you can see on the left-hand side, we have our general channel. And you can see that I can't post messages here. I can't do anything. Uh, I can't reply to anything. Uh, and if you think back to part one, we, we made that change on purpose because we said we only wanted uh, teachers to be able to post into the general channel because it's going to keep it clear for announcements. Like, we cancelled that meeting. And I want everybody to know that that's been cancelled. Computing, we had a look in there. And we can actually start a new conversation in here. And we get to reply to conversations as well. There we go. So we can do whatever we want in there, no problem at all. Computing 2 is our um, private channel, which is why there's a padlock there. Uh, and we use Computing 2, if you think back to our part 1, we were saying we could scaffold some learners, uh, you know, and build them up to, to, to be either, you know, bring them up to a current level, or we can try and push them if they're really good and, and try and, like, you know, really kind of make, make them stretch a bit. And obviously, uh, we didn't put any restrictions on this content that we go in here, um, apart from replies are disabled. I don't know why replies are disabled. Ah, oh, now I know why. It's because my internet has just uh, vanished. But it's okay. Luckily, I'm doing this uh, this bit without the internet. We can look in the history, uh, and we can see that only channel moderators can post in the channel. But we get to reply. Here we go. I can reply. Um, there we go, and I get to reply. But the actual locked one. Only uh, the teachers and art people one and two get to see that. So let's uh, just nip over to our files page for a moment. I want to have a look at the files in the general tab on files. I need my internet for that. <sighs> Isn't life amazing? So what I'm going to do is, oh, my internet has come back. Yay. Right, here we go. Right, let me just disconnect and then I'm going to reconnect uh, it will now actually come back up with hopefully 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 here we go right do you remember when I said you should always have two t two teachers if you're doing anything over the internet if you're doing a live stream or anything that's why my internet just dropped out um, everything went wrong if I was on my own I'd have just left a class of 30 kids um, to discuss whatever they wanted to. So, Kahoot template. This is the one that I said quite categorically. Everybody can edit because it's in the general area. So what I can do in here is I can actually just insert some random text. There you go, and it's fine. And if I push close on that, 
that's fine okay so I'm gonna go back to my teams and I'm just gonna go back to the general bit I'm gonna to go to files and I'm gonna open up this and it will say random text in that first cell there you go you see so my student has definitely definitely altered that they can also put a tick in the box over here and they can delete it <laughs> yes option obviously some of the uh, some of the icons haven't quite come back after the internet restart there but it'll be fine I promise everything's fine just carry on uh, in the class materials which is a read-only thing uh, let's have a look I'm gonna go into the same template if you remember I uploaded the same thing and if I try and type anything in there it comes up and says read only this workbook was open in read only mode and it says categorically up here you're viewing I can view the file but I can make no changes if I then try and delete the file I'll put the tick in the box that you can't see is a tick there's there's nothing here I can't I can't delete it I can't do anything with it so that's kind of really useful so class materials bung it bung our stuff in there that we don't want our, our students to to be able to edit or delete or, or move around or do whatever let's just fly over to our class notebook and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to refresh the whole page so hopefully um, these things can can go away let's just hit refresh on that it's not going to go away is it or is it no nope. right fine see if I can okay so in our class notebook we get the same thing again uh, let's just open up our navigation panel and here is the welcome obviously they still get the welcome uh, the collaboration space this is where we put in our thing about William Shakespeare uh, so let's go into early life again I'm going to click over here and I'm actually going to add some text uh, and what I'm going to do is actually let's, let's add some drawing bits let's go with a nice bit of uh, oh good lord Wow, right, that's supposed to be a question mark. I realise it doesn't really look like a question mark, but it, it that's supposed to be a question mark. So who? Here we go. So uh, if I now flick back over to my teams, uh, I go to my class notebook. Yes, welcome to the class notebook. Absolutely, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, uh, you can delete the welcome section. There you go. I'm going to go to my collaboration space, William Shakespeare, and you can see that obviously pupil one has put who down there. Okay, so let's just click in here. Why does it never let me do what I want to? Okay. Uh, let's scroll down, actually, why not? Let's scroll down to the bottom. No, let's scroll down to the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to type hello. Okay, now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom, and hello is there. It's pretty instant. Uh, there's no sort of you have to wait for 20 minutes normally, unless you cause your broadband crashes. Uh, so I can now reply as art pupil, uh, and let's just go uh, hello. So if I now flick back over here we can see hello is turned up as well so it's, it's a fairly instant kind of process now what we can also do oh actually I was going to show you something else first so all these things that I, 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 I sort of drew over here's my PDF I can still double click on my PDF I can still download my PDF uh, here's my uh, hyperlink so I can click on my hyperlink and then my hyperlink will still work and it will still go to William Shakespeare thank you very much indeed Bill everything still works underneath all of this um, there, there, there's no there's, you know the functionality of these links isn't impaired in any way so if I wanted to let's just go with that uh, if I want it no, no I'm one highlighter oh dear right I'll tell you what, we'll go with red and um, we'll go with that here we go so I can actually draw all over that so I can actually obscure it completely okay so you, we're fairly confident that nobody can see that I click back on my text oh, <laughs> now it's actually uh, selecting the bits and the pieces around it because it's completely obscure but then I can actually drag bits of text away look so that almost looks like a race circuit that bit there 
I mean, not the top bit, obviously. But there we go. It's still there as a clickable link. It doesn't matter what I do, the links are still there. They're, they're, they're permanent links. They will always shine through somewhere. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at Arc Pupil 1's notebook. And as you can see, the only notebooks Arc Pupil 1 can see is the collaboration, content, and their own. Okay, so I'm just going to go with homework for a moment. Let's go with homework, and I'm going to put in here. So this is Arc Pupil 1 uh, Giraffe Hunt. So I've put in here Giraffe Hunt, uh, and if I go back to mine, so as a teacher, oh, I said homework, didn't I? Giraffe Hunt, there you go. See, it, it, it's genuinely almost instant. So our Giraffe Hunt could be, uh, find a picture of a giraffe. So then what we do is obviously for homework, because it is in our homework thing, we have to find a picture of a giraffe. So that's pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a picture from online. I'm going to do a quick search for giraffe. By default, look, this is on about uh, Creative Commons only, so that's the only pictures it's showing us. So Creative Commons, we get to actually uh, use this kind of thing. Just Google Creative Commons. They're, they're, they can explain it way better than I can. You can untick that box and it will give us every image um, that's, that's sort of not to just Creative Commons uh, as well. Uh, there's a little bit down there about... Um, oh, that's a nice picture. There's a little bit down here about being responsible for uh, respecting copyright. So I'm just going to insert that image of, of uh, giraffe. Do -ba -do -ba -do. Here we go. Students done his homework, or her, her, their homework. This is kind of like them bringing you their work. Um, so you're sitting at the front of the class, they bring you their work, you know, whatever it is that they've been doing, whether it's drawing a, a picture of, of whatever they want. Um, it, it's that kind of uh, interaction. And like I keep saying, this isn't to replace a classroom, this is an extension of your classroom. And how you use it is totally and totally up to you. Um, I would suggest don't get them to stick bits of pasta on the screen because that doesn't come across. Um, the only thing that happens then is we have to replace the laptop screen. Um, but yeah, don't get them to do that. That's terrible. Um, or paint. Don't get them to paint on the screen because uh, that's terrible clean off. Um, but it is that kind of interaction. By the way, I know that most of you aren't like, you know, reception to teachers. It's fine. Um, we can actually take this a step further uh, and instead of obviously the you know the the our student coming up and giving us <clears throat> excuse me instead of our student coming up and giving us their work it's just done electronically and we can look and we can see how far they're getting on with it as well so if we look and they've done nothing we can actually send them a message and say okay you've done nothing what's going on are you struggling or are you not you know so it, it, it it's a nice way of actually uh, of, of of doing this kind of stuff. And if I just flick on back to my, there you go, you see the giraffes are already there. So that, in a nutshell, is our class notebook. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to quickly just uh, log off of my Arc Pupil 1 account. And I'm going to log on as Arc Pupil 3, 4 or 5. Depending on uh, which one comes up on my autofill, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, oh, 5, there you go. <laughs> So we'll log on as Arc Pupil 5. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you that that padlocked um, icon for uh, for our computing 2, which Arc Pupil 5 is not in. So Arc Pupil 5 isn't in computing 2. Arc Pupil 5 doesn't even see computing 2. So like I was explaining in part 1, uh, if we're actually looking for some differentiation, um, you know, I mean, kid, kids can be kids, can't they? So th there's none of this, you know, your class SWAT, teacher's pet, all that sort of stuff. Or, you know, you're a thicko and you need extra help and all that sort of stuff. Because nobody can see that extra channel unless you're in it. And that, that that's really, really useful. That's really, really good. Um, so that's... <laughs> I've just realised my phone is not on silent. That, that, my friends, is a rookie mistake. Uh, in fact, rookie mistake like 1.0 huh. okay and if we go to their class notebook all they get to see is 
Open it up, and we've got Art Pupil 5. So they can't see each other's, but we as teachers can see everybody's. So that's our class notebook done and out of the way. What we're going to have a look at now is we're going to look at our assignments. Now, from a student's point of view, because obviously I'm still a student at this point, if I click on assignments, it's going to come up and say, I haven't got any. <laughs> Yay, I'm a student and I've got no assignments. Woo! Uh, unfortunately, you know, my, 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 my teachers are horrible uh, and they're going to assign me an They're going to assign me an assignment. Whew. Right. Now, the assignments tab over here on the left will actually just come up with a class list first. So obviously I'm going to select Thor and then you push next. And this, you'll notice, is basically the same as if I went into Teams for assignments. It's the same page. But let's get started and let's create a, a, an assignment. We're actually going to create a quiz. Uh, I do actually have a quiz, but I'm actually going to create a new one. And that's going to open up Microsoft Forms in a new window for me. Unfortunately, share oh, it's locked me in as Arc Pupil 5. <laughs> Uh, and I want to be logged in as me. So what we can come on, sign out. I'll give in. Right, okay, close that. Create a new quiz. New quiz. It's going to go to open the web page for Microsoft Forms. This time I'm actually going to select myself to log in. And yeah, it's actually logged me in as me, which is great. Okay, so we have an untitled quiz. So what we're actually going to do is uh, we're going to put this, I'm going to give it a name, Bill uh, Wobble Dagger. You can enter a description for, for your quiz. And you can actually add a picture as well. So if you wanted to add an image, you can do an image search. So again, let's just go for William Shaky uh Theory. Um, there you go. Add that as an image, and actually, that's going to push that image just there. Okay. I apparently can't spell description. Uh, I really can. I can. I promise I can. Okay. So we're going to add a new question, and we've got several new questions that we can add. We can add a choice, a text, a rating, a date. We can add a ranking, a liquor, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a choice. And my first choice question is, uh, do you know who Will I Am uh, Shake Spiro is? So there's going to be two answers here, isn't it? It's either going to be yes or it's going to be no. And you can add as many options as you like. Uh, or you can actually add these selected options. So we, by by default, obviously, it's come up and said, because it's scanned that question, it's sort of thinking, well, it's either yes, no, or maybe. But in this particular instance, it's either going to be yes or no. We can add an option, like I said, and obviously we can delete an option. Over here, we can actually set something to say this is the correct answer. So depending on what question, if there was just one correct answer, you can actually just tick that. If there are multiple answers, you just tick that bit down there. And now we can actually select multiple correct answers. I'm going to turn that off and I'm just not going to have a correct answer for this one. OK, so there's no correct answers. We can obviously delete the question or we can leave a little message. Uh, so uh, let's just go with well done. Here we go. You can add points, so we can add points to questions. Now in a primary situation, points aren't normally sort of given out for quizzes and tests and things, unless of course you're doing sort of like house points, that sort of thing, in which case obviously that's that's uh, completely acceptable and we can, we can do that, no problem at all. We can make this a required question by pushing that and we're gonna leave that as a required question. They're gonna have to answer this question. They can go no further in the quiz uh, until they've answered this question. There's three dots here. We can actually have some more bits. Shuffle options, drop down mass, uh, subtitle and branching. We are actually going to come to branching. So I'm going to add the next one, which is a text question. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, which of his plays is the most famous? Now, there are obviously several answers here. So let's go with uh, Romeo and uh, Juliet. Uh, we can go with um, Macbeth. 
Um, oh, uh, just in case, we'll go with uh, Macbeth, but without the A. So we're not going to penalise somebody uh, if they do or do not include an A, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Okay, so there's our, our correct answers, shall we say. Everything else is going to be the wrong answer. I'm assuming, obviously, we've taught them that these are the most famous plays of uh William Shakespeare. We can make it a long text flowing answer, which you will obviously have to read, or we can leave it the short answers. We can make it required or not required. And you've got the three dots where obviously you've got subtitle restrictions, maths and add branching. We are actually going to do branching, I promise. The next one is going to be a rating. So, uh, how much uh, do you like? How much do you like Bill? Or how much? How much do you like build? Now we've got a five star rating here. So we've got five levels and at the moment it's a symbol of a star. You can actually take that down as low as two or up as high as 10. I really like five. Five is great because you've got in the middle, I'm not bothered either way, I really don't care. Or four stars is, yeah, that's, you know, I can't like him, he's not too bad. Five is best writer in the world ever. Two stars, no, I'm not really fond of him. I, I'm, I'm not overly fussed. If I have to read it, then okay, I'll read it, but I'm not really. And then you've got one star, which is, oh my God, do I have to read this stuff? What is this guy going on about? So I quite like the five levels. And you've got symbols for uh, stars or numbers. I generally tend to leave that a star. Research has shown 75% of people are actually more likely to respond to a question on a star rating than a number point. Don't know why, but somewhere in our psyche, we don't like rating people with numbers, but we do like rating things with stars. Who knew? Okay, so the next question across, we've we've done our choice, we've done our text, we've done our rating, I'm gonna skip date, and I'm just gonna go with a ranking question. So I'm gonna put uh, these plays in order of, well, they weren't really released as such, were they? Uh, in, in order of writing. So what we would do now is I'm gonna come up with um, four plays. Uh, what we have to do is we have to put them in in the correct order. Uh, and then when we share the quiz, Microsoft will actually randomise the order in which they appear. So we need to put them in the correct order. Now, I'll be honest, I have no idea about William Shakespeare's plays. I know what some of them are called, but I wouldn't have a clue when they were, when they were written. So I'm going to make up some stuff here, basically. Uh, and I'm going to go with The Merchant of Venice. Uh, and then he wrote um, Macbeth. Uh, then he wrote um, ooh, Romeo and Juliet, which is also, by the way, a fabulous song by Dire Straits. If you are under the age of about 35 and you've never heard Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits, go and listen to Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits. Uh, so we've got Merchant of Venice, we've got Macbeth, we've got Romeo and Juliet. And now we can have... Um, ooh, ooh. Uh, was Othello a play? Eh, it is now. So I've decided that this is the correct order. So I've got Merchant of Venice first, Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet and Othello. So what's going to happen is when, when our, uh, our students get to see this, these will all be randomised up. And of course we have uh, a couple of bits. We've got subtitle and ad branching. We are definitely going to do some branching in a minute, I promise. I'm going to have one last question. Uh, how much did you like this quiz? And I'm going to leave it at the five stars. And I'm going to make it a required one. But what I've just remembered is I've kind of made a bit of a mistake. Uh, where it says question one, do you know who William Shakespeare is? I actually wanted the next, how, how much do you like Bill? Wow, Bill would be really happy. Um, so first off, I need to correct that spelling mistake. Uh, but I also want to move this question sort of up there. And I can't do it by dragging and dropping because there's, there's nothing to drag and drop. So what we do is we click into that question so I can actually now put a W on the end of how. And we've got, we can copy the question, we can delete the question, and we can actually move the question up or down. So I'm just going to move it up so it now becomes question two. And we can rearrange our questions accordingly. Okay. So now we're going to come to the fun part. We are going to go to branching. So I'm going to head to branching. So it says branching options. We've got the back button and that's it. 
So branching, what branching is, is uh, depending on the answer of a question, we can take them down a different line in the quiz. So we can actually, if we wanted to, we can take them on their own learning journey. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some very, very, very basic branching. Okay, so I'm going to click in this question. Do you know who William Shakespeare is? If the answer is yes, I'm going to go to the next question. So it will go to how, how much do you like Bill? If you don't like William Shakespeare, we could pick a question to go to. Any question you like. Um, so at this point, we could have uh, more questions that say, OK, uh, do you remember in class, because we've been doing William Shakespeare for the last six weeks, you know, do you remember we were talking about who wrote all these plays, etc., etc.? And you can actually branch down as far, as far and as deep as you want and as many times as you want. And then eventually, once you've taken them on that refreshing learning journey, you could, if you really wanted to, bring them straight back to this question. Do you know who William Shakespeare is? And hopefully that time they'll go, yes, yes, I do. Thank you for reminding me. Obviously, if the answer is no, uh, what I'm going to do is I can either be really, really nice and just throw them to the end of the quiz, or I could say put these plays in order of writing. <laughs> Or I could just, you know, skip that next bit and say, you know, which of his plays is the most famous. So we can actually um, jump around wherever we want. So if you if you've never heard of William Shakespeare, uh, I'm 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 actually I'm going to be evil. There you go. I'm going to be evil, uh, and you're going to put these plays in order. So that's my branching. That's the only bit of branching I'm going to do because obviously I can do loads more, but you know I'm, I'm not going to. And then I'm going to push back. We can assign a theme to this if we wanted to. So that here are our themes. I'm not going to bother. Uh, I'll, I'll be quite honest. Uh, so we can actually do a quick preview. So here's a preview from what it will look like on a computer. And if you're doing it on a mobile phone, it will look something like that. Now you can see we've only got the first question up here. Uh, and that's not because it only asks you one question at a time. It's because whatever happens next is reliant on us answering this first question. So if we know who William Shakespeare is, how much do you like Bill? You get the full question set. If the answer to that question is no, you can see it changes immediately and says put these plays in order of writing. OK, I'm just going to push back now. So we've actually created our Microsoft Forms quiz. So I'm just going to click on the Forms button over here, make sure it comes up, which it does. I'm just going to believe, uh, believe, delete this one uh, because this is an old one that I don't really care about. So I've only got the one now, which is Bill WD, which is obviously short for Bill Wobble Dagger. And I'm actually going to close that internet page. So this is going to take us back to our notebook. I'm going to hit create. I can't create from existing because although I've actually created that, I don't have any assignments in here, which is the existing part. So I'm just going to hit quiz. It will come up and say, great, that's the one because obviously my, all my accounts are linked. So I'm going to push next. And then eventually, here we go. So the title, which is required, obviously we can change that if we wanted to. There we go. Uh, we can enter some instructions. So if you want to give them a little bit more help, etc., etc., uh, I'm just going to say do it. Uh, we, we're going to assign this to all students, uh, or we can assign it to just particular students. So if we only wanted one, two, and five, then we just select. And if we've made a mistake, we just deselect. So we'll just put it out to all students. It really doesn't matter. And by default, it will always choose the following day at 23.59 as the deadline. I'm just going to leave it there. That's fine. We can post notifications to the general channel, or we can actually edit that and put it wherever we want. But I'm just going to leave it as, as the default. Uh, so it's going to post it in the general channel up there. Now I'm going to push assign, and that's actually going to go away. And we have an assignment. OK, so now I'm going to hit Create again. I can actually now do Create from Existing if I wanted to, because there is an existing uh, quiz there. Uh, OK, no, there isn't. Uh, it's because it's not complete and finished. That's why. So uh, there we go. Uh, the, the, the quiz has now made it into the general channel. I'm going to create an assignment, and I'm just going to call this, um, oh, for crying out loud, uh, A1, short for assignment one. Again, you enter some instructions, do it. This is where, with our, with our assignment, you must add some resources, okay? We don't add anything from forms or anything. This is, uh, a, it might be um, a, a, a text document whereby you've set a question, 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, when was William Shakespeare born? Then there's a gap for an answer. They answer, and then we've got lots of different sort of questions. Uh, and then they, they download this, they answer, and then they upload it. There's a rubric. Uh, a rubric, for those that don't know, is uh, a, like a, um, it's a criterion reference grid. It's also known as a criterion reference grid. Um, if you've done a degree, you've seen a criterion reference grid. And it's, it's, a, it's a grid that shows you from good to bad. So if, if you're only going for a low sort of pass, you're going to get, you know, this, this is what you need to include in it. If you're going for, like, you know, a brilliant pass, this is what you include in it. Not particularly used at primary schools. Uh, very rarely used in secondary schools unless you're, you're in one of the top sets towards the end of, of your secondary school career. Used in colleges and definitely used in universities. I mean, I know they're used in colleges. I've actually taught... Uh, in FE and HR, I've taught um, degrees before, uh, and I can tell you quite categorically, they are definitely used in both colleges and universities. So that's rubrics, but at primary level, we're not going to bother with that. Uh, we're going to assign it to all students again, and obviously I can actually uh, set my, uh, my time on that. Now, I haven't actually uh, finished this quite yet for whatever reason, so I'm just going to push save. I can discard it and it will delete it, but I'm going to push save. And now I've actually got an assignment in my saved, in my drafts. So let's just say I've altered some bits and pieces. Uh, I've finished teaching what I was going to teach my, my, my students. So yes, I can now assign that, so I can just go back in and I can push assign. And now that will actually... Uh, come up in assignments. So we've actually got two assignments now. Whew. There's the history bit where our pupils uh, responded. So that's fine, that's no problem. And in our general bit, we've actually got two assignments that are in here. If we go back to our assignments tab, we can see that nobody's done anything yet. If we go to the assignments um, on, the, on the me space over here, if we've got two or three teams or five teams or ten teams, obviously you choose whatever team it is, you click it, you click next, and it's exactly the same screen. Okay? I'm now going to log on as Art Pupil 1, I think. Yeah, let's do Art Pupil 1. Or in actual fact, let's do whichever Art Pupil comes up first. Let's make it a race. <laughs> um, and it's already logged in as Art Pupil 5. Okay, so we have um, on their assignments tab, uh, as a pupil, you get that kind of thing. Uh, let's go to their assignments here. They're only in Thor. See, same thing both ways. If they click on their team in the general channel, it comes up here and we can obviously view the assignment. So here's the assignment. This is our quiz that we did. So I'm just going to click that and I'm going to do my quiz. Okay, so Arc Pupil 5 is one of our troublesome pupils. Uh, here we go. So. <laughs> Bill Wobble Dagger Thor. Uh, it puts Thor there because obviously it's the Thor team. So do I know who William Shakespeare is? No, I don't. Put these plays in order of right. Oh my lord, do I have to? Um, okay, and it's the same sort of thing. It's the arrow things. So let's go with um, because we don't know who. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. I've, I've, I've no idea. How much did I like this quiz? I didn't really like this quiz. I don't like William Shakespeare. I've no idea what that is. So there. No. Nah. So I'm going to hit submit. I can review my results. Oh, I got that wrong. Well, I got two of them right, but damn. Uh, and then I can obviously just close that or go back to the thank you page. And I get a nice little animation down here. There's a nice little ice cream with some sprinkles on held by an octopus. Who doesn't want that? There's also a rocket. There's, um, oh, there's all sorts. Honestly, there, there really is. There's a jellyfish. There's a rocket. There's a unicorn occasionally pops up and does stuff. So I'm going to go back to the general channel. I'm actually going to do my assignment. So, right, so this is the assignment. So what we can do is we can click on that and it will actually open it up in Teams. Uh, and then you can edit it in Teams. Or we can actually uh, blah, blah, blah. click on the three dots over here and we can download that Word document. Now my internet isn't the greatest in the world, but there we go. We've downloaded that document. That's brilliant. And when we've finished our work, um, like I said, it could be a you know, question, space, question, space. We can upload our work. I'm going to upload from this device. It's going to open up somewhere weird. I'm just going to upload that. And done. And because I've done that, I'm now going to hand my work in. And you can see, hand in up there. And there's the rocket. Oof! There we go. Don't you just love rockets? Okay, so we know that Arc Pupil 5 has actually handed in both of those. I'm now going to log out of Arc Pupil 5. And I'm going to log in as Arc Pupil 1. 
Art Pupil 1 is a great student. Uh, we love Art Pupil 1. All their work is just fabulous. You know, it's, it's, it's just really, really good. They spend the time, you know, and, and, and they make sure they're, they're that student. So let's have a look at Art Pupil 1. And we will see... Uh, Let's go into thought. We can see two there because obviously we've got two assignments outstanding. And let's just have a look at Bill Wobblelagger. And this time we're actually going to do this one properly. Okay, so have I heard of William Shakespeare? Yes. And then you can see that we've got the different branching. How much do you like Bill? I love William Shakespeare. I think he's the best. Um, now when I put these in... Uh, I put them in in lowercase and I did that on purpose uh, to show you that I'm actually putting the names now in capitals as they should be spelled obviously Microsoft doesn't care about um, caps up, uppercase or lowercase if it's spelled right according to the answers that you've given it it, it doesn't care so despite the fact that I put this answer in, in lowercase Romeo and lowercase Juliet and I'm doing it in uppercase Romeo and uppercase Juliet, it will get marked as correct. Okay. So now we're going to put these plays in uh, order of, uh, you know, the weird thing is I can't actually remember, um, but I'm going to go with something like, I think, yeah, Othello was definitely last. Uh, Merchant of Venice was definitely the first one I put in because I had a flash of inspiration and thought Merchant of Venice. Um... And I love the quiz. So I'm going to submit my answers. Doop -doo -doo -doo. Come on, come on. Here we go. Oh, my internet's gone again. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be submitting my answers. What I will be doing now is I shall pause this video and return momentarily. So, um, here we go. I've actually completed my assignment. I didn't get my uh, my nice um, image in the, in the top right, my little GIF up there, because obviously my internet issues. So I'm actually now going to flick back to uh, my teams over here. This is obviously my teaching teams. Click on assignments. So we've got two of five have handed in and one of five have handed those in. So that's great. So already we know immediately that we've got some people handed it in. That's great. Um, we can actually uh, have a look at some bits and pieces so we can actually see the student view um, so that's fine if we look on grades grades is really cool it gives us an overall sort of view here so um, let's have a look at pupil one it's handed in we can actually open the student work and have a look so we can say oh look yes yes oh look at that pupil one is you know by far and away our most favorite pupil or well, we can actually have a look at pupil five. Because uh, pupil five didn't really do a lot, we can return pupil five because there's not much there. Uh, and again, if we actually look at uh, pupil five's work for, um, for the assignment, obviously what they did is instead of answering the questions, they merely put up a picture of some motorbikes. So we can actually return that work. Uh, we can put in there, you know, what? And return. Uh, and we can actually put that work back to our student. Um, this picture, by the way, is completely um, copyright free because I took it. Uh, I took this picture in Germany last year. That's actually my friend's um, 400 N NC30 400. Uh, and that's actually my 1100. Uh, it has the extra wheel at the back uh, because it's a trike because I'm in a wheelchair I have one leg and if I don't have a trike I fall over a lot so my wheelchair is actually in that large black bag there it's not all luggage that's actually wheelchair stuff okay so I don't know why I've just bored you with that but never mind so I'm going to click return and that's obviously going to return the work to our student and then I'm going to click close so you can see I've returned both of those to our pupil so then they can actually go back and actually redo it for us on the second hand in, by the way, they don't get the nice flashy animation. That's only a reward when you do it for the first one. Okay, so whew, that is a very quick run through of class notebook assignments and grades. I want to just have a quick look uh, and show you something on the student version. We've got activity, calendar, teams and assignments. Uh, you can obviously put chat in. Um, but we can turn that off uh, by default. 
Uh, there are times when uh, you know we, we, we've had to turn chat on or off depending on, on what schools want. So if, if it's something that you particularly don't want or you particularly do want, you let us know uh, and we can sort that out for you. You will also notice there are there is no call button. Uh, you can't, as a student, you are unable to call anybody. Uh, and, you know, the, it's, the, the functionality is just not there. Um, and because these are fake students, this doesn't really work very well. Because uh, if I just type in there, me, uh, I can actually send a message to me. Um, but that's because these are fake students, okay? In, in, in the real world, this doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, so they don't get to call. So if you remember back to part one, when I was saying no one-to-ones, we can call them, they cannot call us, and they cannot call anybody else. Okay, so they, we can call them, it'll ring, they answer. There, there is no facility for, for them to, to call us back. So that's pretty much um, part two of the training. I know it's a high speed run through. Uh, have a look at the other uh, videos on YouTube. They're really, really useful. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day. Uh, I've recorded this on the hottest day of the year. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go out and find some air conditioning. Um, hope you have a lovely day and I hope to see you in another video. Thanks and see you soon.